Hi, everybody. Uh, here we are again for our Leader Spotlight. Um, today we're talking to Ben King, and uh, Ben has been helping us out in our elementary um, classroom for the last couple of years, leading a small group of um, boys, different different ages, I think, maybe fourth or fifth grade. I don't know. I'll have him tell us. I can't remember. Um, but we have just loved having Ben um, help out in the elementary room. He is awesome with the kids, just builds relationships with them. Um, and he's, you know, we also love he's flexible and we'll just do what do what we uh, need help with in the room, which is just awesome. So um, I'll let Ben tell us a little bit about himself. All right. Um, hi, again, my name is Ben and um, I have uh, been working in the, I guess, elementary room for, um, I suppose, about a year and, um, you know, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I do have a background in education. Um, I've, I've been working in schools for over a decade as um, school psychologist and um, administrator. Uh, all at the elementary level for the most part, a little bit of middle school. Yeah. Um, right now I work with the fourth grade boys um, at FCC. So um, I have done one one time with the first grade girls, which was a different change, but I'm, <laughs> I'm used to working with the little. So um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, um, I, my fiance, Christina, also works. Um, she that's actually her group is at first grade girls. And um, we are going to get married next October. Um, Yay! We're so excited yeah. for you guys. Yeah, we're pretty excited. And um, and I also I have uh, three children that um, when that come with me to FCC when um, when we're when I have them. So um, and they're all younger, nine and under. So um, yeah, that's that's me. Awesome. Well, obviously you can hear why we love having Ben in the classroom with that kind of background. That's just, um, you can't go wrong with having someone who's been working with kids for this long to be able to come in and, and help out. So we love that. Um, okay, Ben, if you had to choose a vacation, would you choose a beach or mountain vacation? Uh, I would definitely go with beach um, just because I like the warm weather over the cold weather. Yeah. Uh, and um, swimming and all that sort of stuff. And so I would definitely go with um, with a beach. I'm trying to remember, I think Christina said a beach by a mountain, but then she went to say that she actually just really loves the mountains. So yeah, she copped out and said both. But. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think in the end, though, she was mostly saying mountains. So you guys are going to maybe have to do do double vacations so you can do both. <laughs> yeah, odds are we'll just go to the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which season would you choose spring or fall? Um, fall, definitely fall. I like it when it, when leaves start turning colors, it starts cooling off a little bit and, you know, can go out and sit by the fire and, mm -hmm. uh, usually, uh, college football and, yeah. and, NFL and all of that. Sorry. It's a great sports season. Um, uh, usually <laughs> we'll see what happens this year, but. Um, we were talking about that in my family yesterday, and I'm like, I don't know if I can handle a fall without football. That's just would be wild. <laughs> yeah, it would be weird. I know it sounded like it's kind of up in the air for college, but yeah, when I used to, I, I played college football. And so um, I guess it always, that time of year brings back good memories for me. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, what was your favorite toy when you were little? Um, the one that I always remember was one Christmas I got um, the original Nintendo, which I'd wanted. Of course, every kid wanted, but and I never thought I was going to get, and I ended up getting it. I don't know how um, my parents afforded it, but I got it, and I was super thrilled. And then, just like most kids, I was hooked <laughs> for quite a bit of time. Um, then I've talked to even the, some of those fourth grade boys about that, how I got the original Nintendo for Christmas one year, and they they couldn't quite wrap their head around what the original Nintendo was because there's been so many versions, and I their know. original and my original are far off. <laughs> what was your favorite game? 
Um, my favorite game was Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah. So the funny thing is, um, my mom actually found our original Nintendo and she had like a box with some games and stuff in it. And so she gave it to my family when over, like it was around when we were stuck at home and oh, my cool. kids were like all excited about it. And like, we kind of took some finagling to t- try to figure out how to hook it up to our TV because of the <laughs> old clip-ups and it, oh, yeah. we had to do some work to get the, to get it going, but we can every once in a while, if you like put something under the cartridge, you remember that? Yeah. Good connection. We can get it on, and and then they were kind of like, "Oh, oh, this okay. is it. <laughs> this is what I was so excited about." I think we got like Excite Bike to work, and um, oh, nice. and Mario, of course, and then a Ninja Turtle game kind of worked. So <laughs> they weren't too impressed. Yeah, I know. It's kind of sad that those don't even hold the attention anymore. No. <laughs> Um, tell me about a family tradition that you have that you, that you love with your family. We have a tradition, um, on Christmas Eve that we always, um, we all get together and we don't get together just for the meal. We get together for the preparing of the meal too. And so, um, we make homemade chicken noodle soup and oyster stew, uh, every Christmas Eve. And then my grandma bakes pies and, Um, but you know, it's been, my brother and I have really been helping out with, um, you know, making the the noodles from scratch Mm -hmm. and and all of that sort of thing. So, um, it's a lot of fun to, to take that time. And most are some of the best memories are when we're making the meal rather than when we're eating it. So, um, that's something that has always been just, uh, we, we need to make sure that we all do that and sit down and spend time Mm -hmm. as a family. I love that, that you take the time to prepare it together, you know, because usually everybody just brings their dish and just does the eating together. But I love that, that you spend that time preparing and probably just so many good conversations around that. So that's really fun. Yeah. My bachelor uncle um, always brings, you know, the meat and cheese tray. That's his yeah. contribution. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he gives us something to eat while we're while we're making stuff, right. too. It's, good. It's a good contribution in his own way. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can you tell me about kind of your aha moment when you knew, um, that you wanted to follow Jesus, that this was something that you wanted to give your life to? Yeah, I, uh, um, have always been, I was Lutheran, um, um, when, and confirmed Lutheran. And, um, so I've always kind of spent, uh, time in church and, and it was very traditional. And so it was, um, you know, just the a way of doing you had to do things a certain way or you felt like you were going to be in trouble <laughs> or you were you weren't or you weren't doing it right yeah. and um you know so there were times where I would even I kind of I really got into going and 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 being a part of the church and um but then even into college and things like that I would go you know on my own and and find a church there in town um, and then somewhere along the way, I, I had, you know, some rough times in my life as, it, as everyone has times and mm-hmm. um, kind of drifted away from God in the church and, um, you know, actually meeting Christina and she told me how she goes to this great church and it's very welcoming. And, um, you know, I was a little nervous just because I had, I had kind of uh, almost parted ways a little bit. And so I said, you know, God and I have a lot of making up to do, yeah. or I have a lot of making up to do with God. Um, and so she took me and, and I kind of, I got that warm, welcoming feeling, you know, you kind of walk in with, you know, your head kind of down and sulking, not sure you should be there, but never felt that way walking through the doors. Um, and so, you know, I'm also just sitting there and I don't know if it was a song that was played or, um, you know, words that, that Jed was saying, it, it, I started tearing up. It was the first time in church that I had and just mm-hmm. kind of feeling that, that um, welcomeness and forgiveness and, and um, grace, I think was, yeah. it would be the way to put it. So that was really an, uh, it was just fairly recently, but mm-hmm. it was a moment for me. Right. But you have that background of faith too, that, you know, even if you drifted apart from God for a while, that was still there. And, mm-hmm. and, I love your story because just thinking about how you thought you would feel coming and, um, but knowing that God doesn't ever 
feel that way towards us, you know, that he is always welcoming to us and wants us just to, you know, be back in his arms. So that's great. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite Bible verse or Bible story? Um, well, I guess the, a specific story um, that I, I guess I've always held on to is um, when uh, it was the woman that had really had nothing and, and gave um, just a little bit, but it was all that she had while everybody that, um, you know, were deemed rich or wealthy, they gave a lot, but it wasn't, it was only a fraction of what they had where she gave a little, but it was all that she had mm -hmm. and just how um, that was recognized by Jesus. And, um, you know, just goes to show that it's not really what you have, it's what you, what you can give. And yep. uh, I think of that just not only with the church, but just in work and in life and in relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes when you might feel as a person that you've given all you can or you don't have anything to give or you're not worthy to give um, help or um, support or advice that even the little bit you have, it's all you have left is um, can go a long way. So yeah. that would be one um, verse. And then kind of like we talked about just a second ago, my feelings, um, you know, getting, I guess, reacquainted with, with the church, with God, um, just how, you know, Jesus would use um, so many different people who were deemed maybe outcasts or um, less than by others. And he used people that were, that were broken and had gone yep. through some things as, as his examples. So yep. um, I never thought about that before, um, before coming. And um, it's really brought a light to that for me. Yeah. Those are both great, great stories and you know that and examples that the bible gives us i your second one made me think um i've just finished this summer going through a study um that was kind of like from the beginning to the end of the bible like in order mm -hmm. it's called seamless just showing how it all fits together and yeah and that was one of the things that really stuck out to me again is just reminding being reminded of um, you know, that God can use whoever he wants to do his work. And, um, yeah, that people, those people that the heroes of the Bible were also broken, um, mm -hmm. but they were willing to serve God. And that was, that was the important part. So yeah, um, it, I think it's good to pass this along to the kids, you know, my own kids, the kids that I work with that, um, you know, mistakes are mistakes. And, yep. um, you, if, if you can grow and learn from those mistakes, then, you know, you're not, you're not wrong. You're not forgotten. Right. It's, it's just a, a learning moment in your life and there's going to yep. be others. So. Yep. Absolutely. All right. I'll put our last two questions kind of together. Um, can you just tell us why you serve in FCC kids and what you love about serving, serving with the kids? Yeah, I guess the, the quick answer would be, um, you know, Christina said, hey, they need some extra help down there. Do you want help? And I said, sure, I'd love to. Um, and that's really what got me got me started. And um, I think just doing what we do and working with kids and finding another avenue to do that and being able to share in the message that we, um, that we put out uh, to kids is you know, between you and Angela, the things that, that you guys put to get work so hard to put together and, um, and then we get to share that with the kids is really kept me going and, and kept me excited on, on serving in that way. And I've, you know, I've done some other things like, um, you know, serving during communion and stuff, um, during the worship, Right. but it's, it's, I mean, I guess in a selfish way, very fulfilling to work with the kids <laughs> in that way. Um, with FCC, so yeah, great, awesome. And the people we work with, um, all yeah. the, the other leaders are are wonderful too. So it's just yeah. it's always a positive time, um, something to look forward to in the weeks that that I do uh, get to yeah. leave. It's a great way to connect with other people from the church and at just another level. So, too, mm -hmm. that's great. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for talking with us today. And um, again, just thank you so much for serving in FCC Kids. We love having you um, and the kids, you know, just 
love being in your group and um, we enjoy watching you interact with the kids and share God's love with them. So thanks. Thank you. Yep. All right. Have a good day and we'll see you later. Hopefully soon. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.